I recently celebrated a really big milestone, which is having my brick and mortar tiny bookstore, Sunny's, open for one year. This isn't going to be a video about kind of the process of opening a bookstore or how I got there or the financial breakdown of any of it. I've had other videos on my channel detailing that. If you have any questions, you're welcome to ask them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you, but it's more of like a major milestone reflection moment for me to think about all of the major things that I've learned owning a bookstore. Recently wrote about this on the Sunny's newsletter. We have a Substack. I send it infrequently, I promise. I know every single person you know has a Substack now, including me, but I thought it'd be fun to make it into a video as well. So it's on the channel. Cause the channel's really the genesis of it all, isn't it? Okay, so to get into 10-ish things that I've learned in my first year owning a bookstore. The first is be open to changing your inventory. So when we first opened, I had a ton of used books. This is for several reasons. One, getting new inventory is really expensive and I thought it was a fun way to engage my direct community on sending me their book donations in exchange for merch. So I had like a community tie in there, but also because prior to opening the brick and mortar, my experience book selling was through the truck at pop-ups. And at the truck, all we had was used books. And something that I frequently heard was people being stoked about that. They're like, oh my gosh, this is like actually good used books. They're affordable. And I thought that my town and like our socioeconomic standing wouldn't really be primed to want to pay full price for a lot of books, especially knowing that there's a Barnes and Noble in town that has frequent sales and the Amazon online retailer space of it all, right? So when we opened probably for the first six months, we were probably like 60% new books, 40% used books. And at what I found as like time went on, the used books sat, they weren't selling, even if I thought they were like fabulous and cool. Once in a while, we'd have a customer come in and um, buy some used books, but they weren't moving in the way that I anticipated them to. And my assumption about people not wanting to pay full price at Sunny's was wrong. Like it's turned out that our customer base is gonna support us no matter what. And for them, that means buying new books, which is great. It made it so that our inventory was more varied. Like I could take more chances on buying new books and um, stocking more of them. And it eventually meant that I reduced our used inventory more and more over time and got rid of it. Uh, I got rid of it through blind dates with a book. This is by and large, Sunny's probably number one seller. I cannot tell you how many blind dates with a book we sell. We sell them for $10 through a used or a remainder book. And I write a little blurb on them. I wrap them in cute wrapping paper and people go crazy for them. If you're a bookstore owner, please try it. It is like a surefire winner I found. Um, customers are really overwhelmed and want to take a chance on a book. Anyway, I got rid of our used inventory through blind dates with a book and also consolidating and consolidating our used shelf before all of the used and new titles were just together alphabetically. And we're selling more books because of it and we can have more varied inventory because of it and all is right in the world. The second big lesson that I've learned is stock what your customers want to buy. <laughs> I I don't, I don't, I didn't have like a hard and fast line about what I would or would not stock at Sunny's when I opened, right? The whole purpose of this project for me though was to offer our community something that they wouldn't find at big box stores. And for me, that meant diverse titles, translated titles. I mean, books by authors that are queer from some kind of marginalized identity, small presses. And a lot of the times those aren't the books that are like blowing up on uh, TikTok. I, didn't necessarily say like, I'm never gonna stop Colleen Hoover or Sarah J Moss. But when I first opened, I definitely didn't prioritize that in my buying at all. And um, that resulted in us losing some customers. So it's not that like you have to make a buck off of everyone that comes into your door, through your doors, but you want to make sure that you have something for them when they're there. So I might not stock all of Sarah J Moss, one because she's I don't know, already like in the cycle of um, being on her way out, I feel like for her giant series and they take up a lot of shelf space. And if you have one, you have to have like all eight of them, you know what I mean? But I do look at like what other romantic titles to stock, historical fiction, 
and sci-fi fantasy like making sure that i have a few of those different genres that i don't personally read in my reading life available and can hand sell at any moment makes sense like it just makes sense you it doesn't mean you have to convert all of your store's inventory to please whatever the zeitgeist or the trend cycle is saying that people are reading but having romance sci-fi fantasy romance see a couple of those big genre hits and offering them something that like they might not have heard of before so i'm not gonna sell sarah j moss but i might sell you know um mortal follies which is like a different romanticy title that i can offer to customers if they tell me that they're a romanticy reader so stock what people want to buy and like the first half of what i just said the third thing i learned is also stock what you want your customers to buy so one of the most complimented parts of sunny's is our inventory and like oh my god this is such a great selection like i i've never heard of this like i've you know i didn't know this author published this backlist book um x y and z comment about you know the niche kind of titles that we tend to carry opposed to barnes and noble which again is our town's only other bookstore in person buying option and i think that's always going to be a really important like cornerstone of indie bookstore ownership that's why indies exist is for detailed interesting curated selections and i think it's okay not to be a generalist like as much as what i was just saying have something to offer someone it doesn't have to be have every thing in that genre available for someone at any given time you want to have a mix there and you'll find what that mix is kind of organically and through creating relationships with your customer base which leads us nicely into connect with your community so obviously this happens through like more general conversation with customers on a one-on-one -on -one basis when they're in the store but i think having some kind of event programming and relationship outside of like you just being there during store hours is incredibly monumental especially in your first year when you're trying to build bridges to other small business owners and also your customer base so sunny has done a few things so far we host a local abolitionist book club every third friday of the month they use our space they tell people to come buy their books at sunny's all as well i don't lead that book club i am a member of it but um that's something that you might want to think about is offering the space to book clubs that already exist in your area we've also hosted a couple of organizing parties so one has been uh, letter writing for palestinian aid both on the local and the federal level we also partnered with like an abortion access organization where their volunteers could come on the weekends and sit and collect signatures to get um abortion access on the ballot in arizona i've done a book swap i've done um a couple of parties so one for independent bookstore day one for our first birthday and i'm continually thinking of what i can do next right we have like seasonal bingos to engage the community it's all about like how can you offer something besides just like a place to buy a thing for your community and the people who are supporting you which is one of the most rewarding parts of owning a business like if you're just there if you're, if you're opening a bookstore to make money i gotta tell you babe don't do it <laughs> So you have to find those uh, different kinds of avenues that allow organic connections to form and the people that you find through these avenues not only will become your friends but also like your most loyal customer base. So it's well, well worth the effort in my opinion. My fifth lesson and like the most laborious part of bookstore ownership I would say is ordering. <laughs> ordering inventory is so terrible it takes so long the different publishers have such archaic ways of setting up wholesale accounts with them just from a to z top to bottom the entire wholesale distribution industry side of book selling is 30 30 years in the past like they they're not utilizing any modern technology to be able to do things in a way that's like streamlined and make anything easier for you so between like combing through every single publisher's catalog on Edelweiss to 
like all of the just general noise in your head of keeping up with like what you anticipate to be a bestseller, what you think is gonna sell well for your store, the back end inventory of having all of your inventory management and reordering, it's just cuckoo bananas, honestly. It, it there's a million dollar, there's a zillion billion dollar industry, I think, if someone could go in and revitalize and rework how indies order. The only good one is PRH. They're the only people who have a wholesale ordering process that makes any sense. I hate Ingram. Huge, huge time suck. My sixth lesson in my one year book store ownership is design matters, baby. We know that here, we know that here on CJ Reads, but your look and feel of your store matters so greatly. I think invest in brand design. If you, I'm not talking like your friend who can design stuff on Canva, okay? Like you probably know a professional graphic designer. If you don't, I will introduce you to some. <laughs> and pay them, pay them to establish your brand identity, pay them to think about your merch. Think about your physical store, the furnishings there, the fixtures, what kind of inviting vibe you want to offer to your community if you want it to be a place for people to sit down and work and have conversations with each other. Like all of those different touch points of your brand matter so deeply and are your differentiator in the world of retail, right? I really, really encourage you to take your time and think about what that means for you and what feels true to your book selling project and the kind of feeling you're trying to invoke. Another lesson I've learned is perfecting your greeting. I am, I don't know, I think I'm like an extroverted introvert on the scale of, if we're measuring kind of, you know, uh, chattiness. I have no problem chatting with people and talking to people, but I wouldn't say that's like my go-to response when I'm interacting with strangers opposed to some other people like, I know like my husband and my best friend who are just like could talk to a wall. I would just rather observe and be quiet. And that's not really um, always <laughs> the demeanor you want in a retail environment. So I've gotten a lot better. Um, Pop-ups definitely trained me to be able to interact with people and, chat with them and make them feel welcome. But I would say like perfect your greeting and it'll help you perfect the art of the hand sell. So when people come into Sunny's, this is what I say every single time. I say, hey, welcome in. Let me know if I can help you find anything or if you need a recommendation. I think it's like chill, doesn't gender them. Um, also leads with like an open invitation to keep talking, which I think, you know, you don't want to like close people off. And I also hate when people are like, hey, how are you doing today? It's like, fine, I, I'm doing fine, stranger salesperson at a retail place. Like, I don't ever want to be asked that personally. So my version of the script works for me. I encourage you to find what works for you. Next lesson, the shelf talker is everything, baby. Having a quippy little shelf talker to help promote your face out books, get stuff sold every single time. So. It can be descriptive, it can be funny, it can be, if you liked this, read this, but it has to be short and sweet and like talk to people. So some I like to use a lot is like, read this if you have mommy issues, read this if you think you're secretly an alien, read this if you're a tiny little gremlin, like things that are just kind of evocative and would encourage someone to be like, ha like let me turn over this book and see what it's like. Not just like this beautiful moving memoir will tells the story, you know what I mean? Like don't be too verbose with it and try to synthesize what the selling point of the book is in a way that will entice someone to pick it up. I think it's huge and I think it's an art and I've gotten better at it over time. Lastly, a sentimental um, tip, but ask for help, Bobo. You can't do everything yourself and nor should you. You know what I mean? You have family and friends for a reason. So that support network and like tapping people in where it makes sense to and can play to their strengths or will actually help like get you to prevent being burnt out or prevent you hitting a wall of some sort. Really rely on your family and your friends and your larger community in your first year of small business ownership and beyond really. 
it is hard and you're going to need people and um, those relationships you have will sustain you throughout the rocky course of this whole journey. Yeah, I don't know. Those are like nine lessons that I've learned that I think I just wanted to like cement at this moment of time and have as a memento for myself to look back on and hopefully just be a reminder to you if you're looking to do this as well. And then maybe to round out the video since that was only like 14 minutes, I will answer some questions that I gathered from the community. Um, someone on YouTube said, I'm interested in the community aspect of your bookstore and I struggle to put this in a question. For example, do you feel part of your community? Do you do or plan to do regular events for your community? How do you participate in your community, etc.? I think this is the best thing I could have done for moving back to my hometown and reestablishing myself as an adult is be involved in the community aspect via Sunnies. It is aligned with my own personal moral values. It is aligning myself with like-minded people. It is like creating a physical space and kind of an aura around the business at large where people will like know what we're about. For example, we've hosted abortion access events, right? So through that, people are like, oh, you could probably host like the harm reduction kit making party at Sunny's and like that word of mouth will spread about your space being a place for people who are probably like-minded to congregate. I totally feel a part of my specific niche of the Yuma community here and I think I put that entirely on Sunny's. If I didn't have a reason to go out and like be with people and like inter interface with them in that way, I would like be at my house all the time not talking to anyone. So it's been mon monumental in that. And I think from what I've heard, people are really like liking having that kind of light bulb of sunnies and attracting other moths to the light and finding people through it, if that makes sense. Someone said, do you have any wishes slash ideas how you want your bookstore to evolve over the years? Or what part of your work isn't working out? <laughs> um, I've been thinking about this a lot lately because it's like, okay, what's next, right? Like we're profitable now, we're stable. I kind of feel like I have the swing of things in our current iteration. And to be candid with you, I would love bigger space. We right now are in like 650 square feet and I think that's, fine and totally bite-sized and like what we needed but it doesn't allow us to stock everything that we would like uh, including like more books but also kind of different gifts and shelf talkers and non-bookish items which would draw people in to be able to spend more time in the space but ideally I would love Sunny's to have a bigger location that could facilitate more community events and gathering and organizing in an easier way that would like just allow more people like movie nights, spoken word nights, open mic nights, like poetry in the garden nights. I don't know. I have a zillion ideas of what it could look like. I'm just kind of waiting for the right space to open up. I'm pretty limited in downtown Yuma. I want to stay on Main Street. It's where the only foot traffic in Yuma is. So I'm kind of just waiting until we have something that feels viable and I can make my move. But the main thing I want in the upcoming years is more space because we'll just be able to do more and host people more easily. And I think for me, I would like to maybe be a little bit less in it. You know what I mean? Like right now I'm so in it. I touch every part of it and I would like to I guess diversify hiring maybe if we ever got to a spot where I could offload like major responsibilities to someone in a way that would feel meaningful for like my personal brain because I do have a full-time job um, outside of Sunny's. How do you pick which books to order new? So again I am constantly on Ingram which is the wholesale discount site that all bookstores order their books from. I'm looking at publisher markups of their catalogs and Edelweiss. I look at bookshop.org for their bestsellers. I follow tons of other bookstores on Instagram and kind of see what they're buying in. I look at different subgenres and their new releases that I know are going to speak to my customer base. So like for example, I have one customer who's a really great customer and she loves horror. So like I have to keep up on horror books to like satisfy her. <laughs> um, but it's kind of just 
seeing what I think our perma stock is and like having that always be in the store, refilling that and then peppering in new things to try on top of that based on everything I just talked about. Do you have someone else do your books, accounting, taxes, etc.? That seems like the most intimidating part of owning a business. I was wondering if you had any tips on how you handled that aspect of your bookstore. I have a tax person. Um, he does our taxes. Right now, I'm running everything through my personal name. I have an LLC for Sunny's, but we haven't used it for a reason that I'm not really sure of. He's just like told me the tax benefits for doing it the way he wants to are better for the way he's doing it right now. To be honest, I'm like pretty hands off with that. I just collect all of my stuff at the end of the year. I um, manage our QuickBooks, so Throughout the year, my accountant has like an accountant login to our QuickBooks and he will do an audit in June and then again, um, not in June, twice a year, right before tax season and then sometime mid in the year after tax season. He will kind of do an audit and make sure I'm labeling and doing everything correctly as in like logging our expenses, but I do all of that and it's pretty easy. Don't be scared of that. Just like make sure your QuickBooks is attached to your business checking and any credit card that you have and the labeling is pretty automated and you should be good to go. Who comes up with the apparel and sticker designs? They're so rad. I am blessed with a stable of sweetie friends and sweetie ex coworkers who are designers. <laughs> uh, I worked in brand design as a project manager for the last zillion years and I know a ton of cool people and illustrators. I brief them, so I like come up with a creative idea and pretty much give them free reign to take it where they want to. And it's like a collaboration from that. So I've worked with Harrison Gerard, Noelle, what is Noelle's last name? Noelle Anderson, sorry Noelle. Um, Gabby Watson, James Casey, Carly Lynch, probably some other people I'm forgetting. And if I am, I'm so sorry, but those are the main designers I have used in the past. Could you go into detail about your point of sale system? Do you add barcode stickers to items and scan them or enter prices manually? I use Square for retail right now. It is not a bookstore specific point of sale system. There are some that exist, but one, they're expensive, like books, book, book log, I think. And there's a bunch of other ones too. Um, I'm blanking on their names, but if you're a part of the ABA, that is all documented for you to explore on your own they hook up to publisher accounts and will make your ordering I think easier but they have a pretty big buy-in usually like I'm talking like tens and thousands of dollars and also you have to be a Windows user and I refuse I just refuse my life is too short so other bookstores do use Square I'm actually part of a bookstore group on Facebook called bookstores who use Square it's been a great resource and you can basically scan your inventory in or import it via CSV. I don't use any printed barcodes. I use the ISBN barcodes on the back because they hook to the book and when you export your sales, you can just copy that same barcode number in when you're doing your ordering. So it kind of reduces labor on that front. But I find it works for me so far, like it's manageable. Again, I'm not like a bookstore that has 30,000 titles, you know what I mean? I have like five to 600 at any given time and a lot of them are reorders. So it's not like I'm adding new inventory in and starting stuff from scratch every week. But Bookstore for Square will automatically pull down the name, the author, and the cover image into your Square terminal. So it's actually not like that much. You just have to set the price. And then I got a couple questions on our Discord. Um, someone said, do you know anything about your clientele? As in, are they mainly humanites or do people travel to come to an indie? Are there tourists, etc.? So we have a ton of regulars who we love dearly, but I would also say um, Yuma is right between San Diego and Phoenix and a lot of people come down here to have a pit stop on that drive and then also stay here for a night as they're making their way just like down the west coast in general so we do get like a ton of people who are just traveling through and they live in bigger cities and they're just like thrilled to see something cute in podunk yuma no offense for calling you podunk yuma but you know you are and then we also have like a ton of people who visit their family here which is nice and i'm sure 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 that's true of every other city too but 
um yeah like holiday weekends it's like a big turnover of like people who've moved away but are still visiting mom and dad and come back so it's a mix i don't know I, i'm meeting new customers all the time though so i still feel like i hear constantly oh i didn't know this was here so it's locals it's non-locals it's a mix what's your favorite and le least favorite thing about running a bookstore oh my god my favorite thing is like just off the offering of the space i don't even think it's necessarily that it is a bookstore i think it is that it's a bookstore because it's just like an access point to culture and different points of views that are kind of democratic and like on an even playing field as opposed to sunny's being like a leftist art space or something you know what i mean like it has an entry point that like people can access because most everyone reads right i think just like curating the vibe and like responding to the community need and just hearing semi-frequently about how great this space is and how much Yuma needed it and how much x y and z would be different if it existed in Yuma when they were a kid which is literally exactly why i opened this like imagine living in a town with no indie bookstore i couldn't do it I couldn't do it so I had to take this on for the team and do it myself so just like being the person who did that it's the sickest thing ever and talking to people chatting it's the best my least favorite thing again it has to be ordering <laughs> I hate ordering so much it takes so much time and labor you guys like being a bookstore buyer is no joke it's a lot what advice would you give to anyone thinking about trying to open a bookstore? Hmm. I think like realize that you're opening a retail store. Have you worked retail before? If not, like go try to work a retail sales shift some more. And then I've said this in previous videos, but start where you can, okay? I don't think the best way to get, in, get into book selling is like automatically open a brick and mortar. I'm so thankful for like what the truck taught me, what doing pop-ups taught me, and like doing this on my timeline and at the pace I wanted to did for Sunny's at large and for me as a business owner. Lastly, what's a book you'll always keep in stock? I know you guys are sick of hearing me say this but a book i constantly keep in stock and i've sold so many of is the deeper the water the uglier the fish by katya apikina i can just hand sell the shit out of it it's like my go-to what kind of book are you looking for right now and then i'm able to answer them i think we also always have in the distance by hernan diaz in stock there's a bunch of books that i would consider sunny's perma stock i'm happy to make a different video on that but it's stuff that i know i can speak to and can sell is basically the answer there all right angels survived one year let's keep going let's see if we can keep doing it thank you for all your support online people you're a huge reason of why we're succeeding too so i love you and let me know if there are other questions i can help answer